Star Wars Tabletop Gaming is proudly supported by Gatekeeper Games, your key to gaming unplugged. A tabletop games store offering a friendly atmosphere for people to buy and play their games in the north of Fitzroy. In the last episode, we talked about the Force Power upgrades. Uh, the episode went for a little long originally, so I've cut it into two parts. This is the second part, where we'll be talking about all the upgrades for Stormtrooper units, Rebel Trooper units, speeder bikes, and the AT-RT. Uh, upgrades such as the grenade upgrades, the tech upgrades, the communication upgrades, maybe that's their name, the trooper upgrades, and the specialist trooper upgrades. So, I hope you enjoy. So here we have the basic Stormtrooper upgrade. So in a game like Warhammer, you are uh, you spend points to upgrade your units, and you work that out uh, in a codex. Right? Plenty of them here. Uh, that book essentially tells you how that works, how many how many you can have. Uh, it's quite complicated, and each unit has about a page of text that dictates how you upgrade units. Uh, the card, this card system is obviously a lot more simple, uh, and we know that each Stormtrooper unit can only have one extra basic Stormtrooper because that's the, uh, the icons that are, that are on their unit card. Uh, so this is the extra Stormtrooper you can give your unit if you want to flesh it out a bit and give it some more, uh, some more bodies in the unit. And it's just add one Stormtrooper mini. There's that word, mini again. Uh, and it's 11 points, uh, which, you know, matches up with their uh, with their point cost. So, nice and simple. Uh, if you want more Stormtroopers, go for it. It'll be interesting to see how many Troopers we get in the Wave 1 kind of Stormtrooper box set, uh, and whether each unit comes, it should come stock standard to allow you to put an extra one in there. Um, would you always want to use this upgrade? Maybe not. Uh, when we look at the rocket launcher, for instance, I want my rocket launcher Stormtrooper unit to be as small as possible, uh, and as cheap as possible, because I just want to focus it on that one role. Uh, whereas a Stormtrooper unit that you want to send out to capture objectives, uh, maybe you want to have a few more bodies uh, to be able to take a few more casualties and put out a bit more firepower. So, that is our Stormtrooper. Uh, yeah, good. Alright, next we have a Specialist Trooper, or a Heavy Trooper, whatever they're called. And this is the DLT-19 Stormtrooper. Uh, which is a, looks like an anti-tank rifle there, which is very cool. Uh, it is range 1 to 4, it is 2 red dice, and it is 24 points, so not cheap, noting that a Stormtrooper unit is only 44 points to begin with, so keep that in mind with how powerful FFG thinks these weapons are. So, uh, add one DLT-19 Stormtrooper unit, uh, sorry, mini, uh, and it has Impact 1. Uh, which is effective against vehicles. So it gets you to change one of your hit dice from this weapon to a crit. Uh, and crit is the only way that you actually damage vehicles. Your hits will do nothing. Uh, and it's got two red dice, which is, uh, which is very accurate. So this is the unit, I guess, you want to be putting at the back of the battlefield or behind the rest of your units, kind of out of range of, uh, of firepower, and just sniping away at, uh, at vehicles. Or I can, I can snipe away at, uh, at enemy units just as well. Um, noting that if they're in cover, it won't be as effective. So yeah, this is uh, a bit of an anti-vehicle rifle, which is cool, and long range, which is nice. Next, we have the HH-12 Stormtrooper. So this is our rocket launcher. This one I'm excited about. So once again, oh yeah, and these are Stormtrooper only upgrades. So you can't chuck a, uh, a Stormtrooper rocket launcher in a Rebel Trooper unit. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, range two to four, so you can't fire this at units within range two. Uh, once again, long range, which is nice. It has three black dice, so pretty accurate. Definitely more accurate than white, that's for sure. Not as accurate as red. Uh, it is exhaustible. There we go. So I think that green symbol with the arrow on the, uh, the right-hand side there, I think that does mean exhaustible. And that just means you can't, you know, move. Well, you can't do that anyway. It means you won't be able to take kind of two actions each turn. Uh, that aren't firing your rocket launcher. So you want your Stormtrooper unit to be very specific and geared towards this rocket launcher because that's what it's chiefly going to be doing. Uh, it's not going to be moving because the weapon is cumbersome, which means you cannot use this weapon and move during the same activation. So your, uh, your Stormtrooper rocket unit, you're going to want to get behind some cover and then just sit tight uh, wherever the vehicles are. Um, I think this will be really important, this upgrade, in regards to where you place this unit at the start of the battle. Uh, and what the rules are around placing units. So wherever your enemy puts down, or wherever the rebels, whoever you're facing, puts down a vehicle, this is where you're going to want to then put this unit down. So however that works, we're not sure. Um, it, I think it'll be alternating, putting down units, so you want to keep this one till the end, till you know where their vehicle's going to be. Uh, and it has impact three, which is huge! Uh, while attacking a unit that has armor, change three of your hits to crits. Insane. 
so if you're getting three hits with those black dice, which I don't know, hopefully you are, uh, then that's, uh, that's upgraded to three crits, uh, which is epic. There you go. Madness. Uh, and I think crits get through, get through cover as well. That sounds familiar. Uh, so look, this could be used to, uh, to, uh, to sweep units out of, uh, out of cover as well, uh, which is, which is really nice, which makes sense. A rocket's gonna, gonna blow up their cover. Uh, a little wall's not gonna do much against the rocket launcher. So that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Alright, uh, it is 34 points. So super expensive. Uh, that's almost as much as a whole Stormtrooper unit at 44 points, but I think it's an awesome weapon, uh, and I think it's gonna do a lot of work on the battlefield. Next up, we have Targeting Scope. So this is a tech upgrade, uh, with uh, both stormtroopers and rebels can take and targeting scopes reads you gain precise one when you spend an aim token reroll up to one additional dice so we know that stormtroopers already have precise one as well uh, so giving them precise one I think adds on hmm so with the Stormtrooper unit that has targeting scopes, uh, if they spend an aim token, which is what you want to be giving them because of that special special text, uh, this will allow them to roll, re-roll four of their dice, uh, whether that be their really, really shoddy white dice or those really good uh, HH12 black dice that we saw before. So targeting scopes, pretty cool. Uh, only six points, which is really nice. So I think you might want to put this on your basic Stormtrooper unit uh, to make those white dice a lot more effective. So that's my, that's my thoughts on that one. All right, next, Rebel Trooper. A little bit blurry there, sorry about that one. Uh, these pictures were all, were all taken at various events uh, by people just kind of snapping them right there and then. We haven't had official releases of a lot of these, so I apologize for the quality. Uh, but we know that it says Rebel Trooper, uh, Rebel Troopers only, and this is add one Rebel Trooper Mini. Uh, so just like the Stormtrooper upgrade, this is 10 points, so one point cheaper, uh, and it means you can have an extra Rebel Trooper in your unit. Pretty simple stuff. All right, here are the special weapons for the Rebel Troopers, or the Specialist Troopers, I should say. So the Z6 Trooper, love this weapon. So you've got six white dice, uh, which is putting out you know, more firepower than an entire Stormtrooper unit. Uh, white dice, they're pretty, they're pretty rubbish, but you get six of them. Uh, so that's, that's really cool. 22 points, which is pretty cheap for a Specialist Mini, uh, from what we've seen so far. Uh, and if you've set your unit up to have uh, targeting scopes, perhaps, or if you've just taken aim tokens, uh, these white dice could uh, could be pretty good. So that is the Z6 Trooper. So many dice. All right, the MPL 57 Ion Trooper. Now this is the one that I'm excited about. So it's range one to three, it is two red dice. Uh, just like the rocket launcher, it is exhaustible. So you're gonna wanna gear your Rebel Trooper unit towards using just this weapon. Uh, and it reads, uh, add one MPL 57 uh, Trooper Mini. Uh, it's got impact one, so it's gonna be effective against vehicles doing damage to start with. Uh, and also ion one, uh, which gives vehicles ion tokens. Now, we're not quite sure how that interacts yet and what the ion rules are, at least I'm not aware of them. If someone is, please leave it in the comments. Uh, but I have a feeling that the vibe I get is that the vehicle unit cards instead of courage, have that little orange cog symbol. Uh, the ATRT, for instance, has the, the four, four cogs, whatever that means. Now, I think that has to do with ion tokens. So I think if a uh, ATRT gets four ion tokens, e equaling its, uh, its cog value or whatever those cogs are called officially, that will lock down the unit. Uh, what, whether it just reduces it to one action or reduces it to zero actions, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I have a feeling that's that's how that's going to work. So pretty cool. Uh, it is 32 points for that one there. So pretty expensive stuff. Uh, but I think Ion's going to be pretty powerful. And if we start seeing some weapons with Ion 2 or Ion 3, um, vehicles will really have to watch out for them. Uh, cool. So that is our MPL 57 Ion Trooper. Concussion grenades. So both stormtroopers and rebels troopers uh, have their grenade icon, which means they can take concussion grenades. And this is at range one. You've got one black dice and it's blast, ignore cover. Now this isn't an extra trooper mini. So one of your minis is gonna be giving up firing uh, to use this at range one. So keep that in mind. It's only five points. So it's certainly not gonna, not gonna break the bank. Uh, and it means that, and it's got blast, which is ignore cover. Now, something I'm not sure on is whether at range one, every single one of your minis gets to use concussion grenades. Uh, 
I think maybe they would. That would make a bit of sense because why? Why else? Wise wouldn't you just use? Like, why would you bother one black dice that ignores cover? Whereas if now all of your stormtroopers at range one uh, have a black dice and ignores cover, that seems a lot better. Uh, yeah, that seems really good. So hopefully grenades work and that every mini gets to use them uh, when they're you know when they're able to, i.e. at range one for these ones. Uh, so that'd be really cool. If it's just one, I'm not that interested, uh, and I'd probably forget it, honestly, uh, in the heat of battle while rolling dice. So we'll, uh, we'll just have to wait out uh, and see how that works. So that is concussion grenades. All right, now we're on to the AT-RT upgrades, uh, the different weapons that it can take. So your yeah, AT-RT for 55 points comes base with its claws, which is three red dice in close combat. Super good. Uh, that's like half as good as Vader for just a random 55 point vehicle. Why not? Uh, and it also comes with the two white dice that, uh, that the rebel sitting on top has with their, their rifle, uh, which is not very effective. Two white dice is, is pretty trash. I mean, it's better than a stormtrooper, but you know, you want to do better things with this vehicle. So what you then do is upgrade it with one of the, uh, the three weapons we're about to look at. Each have a different role, uh, and each are quite expensive. So when you look at your ATRT and see 55 points, no, 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 you're going to be spending around 80 to 100 points uh, for that for that vehicle. So let's look at them. So first we start with the AT-RT Rotary Blaster. I really like this weapon. So it's range 1 to 3 and it is 5 black dice. Uh, that's, that's super good. Uh, the black dice, I really got to learn these statistics, but it's like, you know, 5 out of 8 chance, depending on your searches or whatever, to get hits uh, slash crits. Or is it 6 out of 8? One of the two. Either way, super, super effective, uh, and it's fixed front, which is you must be inside the front arc. So something to keep in mind uh, with your vehicles is that your front arc is more powerful. So the position and movement of your vehicle, noting that it can only turn in a certain, you know, a certain arc because of the movement tools, uh, will be super important. Uh, and you're going to want to kind of line them up where you think the enemy that you want to shoot at is going to be uh, in previous turns. So this one's uh, good. The, the AT RT, you want to kind of get into a nice fire lane and kind of shoot down that fire lane, I guess, where your front arc is. So five red, five black dice, uh, you know, pretty straightforward, super effective. It's good, good standard that'll be useful against pretty much everything. So that is the Rotary Blaster. Next, we're going to look at the laser cannon. So this one's pretty cool. Uh, it's range two to four, so you can't shoot at units within one, but it's got that extra range above and beyond the rotary cannon. It's got one red dice, better dice, and two black dice. Uh, so that's, that's all right, I guess, but what it does have is impact three, uh, just like the rocket launcher. So this is gonna be your anti-vehicle weapon. Uh, shooting at range four at vehicles and potentially doing you know three crits on it is epic. Uh, that's, that's really nice. So you wanna sit this, in somewhere where it's got good firing position, you wanna give it aim to make sure these few dice are really counting, uh, and you just wanna take a whole bunch of hull points off enemies. So impact three, I think that's as much as, as Vader and Luke, really. Uh, just, it's really good. So there we go, impact three. 35 points, so a little more expensive than the rotary cannon, um, and if your enemy didn't bring vehicles to the game, you are uh, you may be wasting your time with this one, but we'll wait and see. So the next one is one that I'm uh, that I'm super excited about. If we if we get there, Ooh. uh oh, there we go, flamethrower. So range one. Uh, so you're gonna have to be close up. You're gonna have to be putting your ATRT into the fray. Uh, it's got two black dice, but wait for it. So it's ATRT only. Blast ignores cover. Excellent. Fixed front, sure, but spray. So add this weapon's dice to the attack ball one time for each mini in the defending unit uh, to which line of sight is not blocked. So scenario, you've got a stormtrooper unit, it's claimed an objective right in the middle of the battlefield behind heavy cover, you cannot move it off that, that cover, it's a pain in the butt, you just rock up your ATRT out of nowhere uh, within range one, so six inches, so you know, you know this, so it's close. Uh, and you're, uh, you then get, let's say that, uh, that Stormtrooper unit has five Stormtroopers left in it. You've now got 10 black dice, ignoring their cover, so they're not going to be able to take two hits off you, uh, to just absolutely wail on that unit. So, that's awesome. Uh, I am 100% going to be, uh, kidding out an ATRT with a flamethrower. Uh, probably with a second ATRT um, with a rotary cannon to kind of work in conjunction with each other because because uh, this weapon's only going to be effective close up. So you want to just rush this vehicle towards wherever you know an objective is 
uh, and make sure you're flushing the enemy out of cover where possible. So I really like the flamethrower. I think it's going to be super powerful. And I, uh, I can't wait to, uh, to roast some stormtroopers. Right, 25 points for that one. So it's the cheapest of the weapons, and that puts your ATRT at only 80 points, which is, which is pretty good, uh, considering a Stormtrooper unit costs 44 uh, before upgrades. Keep that in mind. All right, cool. So those are our three ATRT weapons. Next, we've got the Long Range Comlink. So this is the other upgrade you can put on an ATRT. Uh, I don't really know what this symbol is or what the name of this symbol is, but it's kind of a little canister thing, maybe communications, maybe it's a comlink. Could be a com link, I'm not sure. Uh, and you can also put this on speeder bikes as well. So ATRT and speeder bikes, long range com link. It reads, during the command phase, uh, you may be issued orders as though you're in range of the nominated commander. So nominated commander, that's interesting. Uh, so you, if you have two commanders, do you get to nominate them at the start of the battle or at the start of the turn and kind of switch between them? I think it'll be at the start of the turn, which will be really cool, giving you more flexibility uh, and more options for using those order cards. But this one uh, allows pretty much to turn your ATRT or speeder bikes into another commander uh, in regards to issuing orders, uh, which is really cool. So uh, with the, the mission Disarray, which I have just here, uh, so that's the one with the different deployment zones. Uh, spread out so your units are always going to be kind of separated from each other. Uh, having an ATRT or a speeder bike unit, probably ATRT would be better because speeder bikes are going to be speeding off, as it were. Uh, but having an ATRT in one of those deployment zones uh, with some troopers mean they're still going to be able to get orders uh, when you need them to throughout the games. So this is 10 points for this one, uh, and I think we'll, uh, we'll definitely see this play uh, as people work out how important having orders are uh, spread across the battlefield. And next up, we have the... Oh, and that's it. No, that's all of them. So that is the 18 upgrades that come in the core box set, or at least the ones that we've seen so far. There may end up being more. Uh, they really open up options for your different units. Um, a Stormtrooper unit uh, base with uh, just you know no upgrades is going to be doing a very different role to a Stormtrooper unit with an HH-12. Uh, I think all of the weapons we've seen will have a place uh, and all will have a purpose, which is really good design as well. Uh, I know in other games, some weapons are just like, why would you why would you ever take that? I don't think this will be the case, uh, and it'll allow you to differentiate right from the get-go uh, between the different, different uh, trooper units especially, uh, to make them interesting and, and give them different roles. So, uh, hopefully you've got, some, uh, you've got something out of watching this, a better idea of how the upgrade cards work and what you'll be putting them on. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and may the force be with you.